Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video today because they finally uh, announced that Summer 4 is coming really soon after Summer 3 is over. So not much time to prepare if you're someone who's like, oh my god, I'm still recovering from Summer 3. You don't have much time. Um... So yeah, today I'm going to be going over some Summer 4 stuff. Uh, I'm going to try and not talk about the Part 3 banner, because that would be too much to talk about in one video, so I'll save that, um, because we all know it comes a week after the launch of this, so I'll talk about it then. Uh, but that's going to be today's video. I hope you like it. If you do, you can leave a like, comment, and tell me anything about you're looking forward to for Summon 4. I should mention you should like it. It helps the video a whole bunch. I usually forget to say that a whole bunch. Um, and that's why I'm getting tongue-tied right now trying to say things. But it does help me a whole lot. Change the word that time. And you guys have been very supportive with my recent Fago videos, and I thank you very much for it. And you can subscribe to me if you uh, want more videos in general. I do a whole bunch of other stuff. Whenever there's not, whenever I'm too crazy busy trying to grind Fago, I do other things. But anyway, this is the Las Vegas Summer Fours in Las Vegas. It is a championship match, seven duels of the Sword Beauties. The limited unit is Hokusoi, who I don't think I'm saying that name right at all, but someone tried to tell me the correct way of saying it. And because they told me the correct way of saying it, I completely forgot it, so forgive me. <laughs> uh, but she's going to be the free unit, and now we'll go over here to actually look at some other stuff. So the thing about this event is that it's kind of all about betting QP at casinos to, uh, for challenge event quests. Uh, when you win, you get your QP bet back and more QP on top, plus gain QP points equal to the QP reward. But when you lose, you lose the AP and QP. So it's just like Vegas, so make sure not to lose. Uh, QP ones are added to a QP count, uh, a QP point counter, as you can see right here. Uh, you progress through the main quest and event quest to challenge high rate casinos. New event quests will appear, allowing you to gather QP at higher rates. Progress the main story, and then challenge fever mode for some casinos. Each casino will enter fever mode as set schedule. Expand fever tickets to challenge special event quests that appear at a casino in a fever mode. Unlocking uh, event quests that award QP at a higher rate and challenge fever mode quests. So there's a lot of way. This is a very good event for getting QP, and I can show you this right now because this is one of the fights that you can do in here. Uh, it's, I believe, an extra quest to start at bets. So you can see here the AP cost to go into it is two million, but then if you win, you get four million. But then you raise, um, and this is non-repeatable. You have higher QP cost, but the ward or double the QP spent. So you can just do this once. Four million to go in. And then you win 8 million. And this one's 6 million to go in. You win 12 million. And this one to get in, you need 50 million. And then you win 100 million QP. So this is kind of what you can see here. This entire event is really around getting a bunt load of QP. And QP is a very big commodity. Is that the right word I'm looking for? It's a very precious resource in Fago. You constantly need it and there's never enough of it. So play this event. That's just a small taste of something that's coming. That's a big chance quest. And there's obviously some other stuff coming pretty soon. Let me see if I can actually find the other casinos. Because I remember trying to find them and it was just like no luck for me. I don't think I can find it right now, but it's fine. For now, let me go to main info. Go to event card. So here are the command codes that you can actually win. Uh, get whatever way you want to pronounce it that way i guess yeah you can get these Ma major flowers charge NP gauge by 10 percent one time every three turns when attacking using the engraved card brush of a mad painter when engraved on an arts card increases crit damage by 20 percent on the engraved card ukiyo optus remove one np damage up buff when attacking using the engraved card is successful remove the buff inflict art resistance down by 10 percent for three turns the event uh, craft essences are Heavenly Demon Princess, uh, NP damage 10%, crit, art crits damage 15%, 30% starting NP, and 50% uh, appearance rate of these types of enemies. Maximum broken is 30%. Midsummer Memories, it is Quicken Buster 10%, NP damage 10%, and 100% damage to the equipped servant for the event. Uh, Welcome Bunny, arts up by 10%, crit damage 10%, 3 crit stars. You get this chip, and then for the male version is Poolside Bar, Buster 10%, NP gain 10%, NP damage 15%, and it drops another one. Purple Eye, we have Arts and Buster 8%, Crit damage 8, 
and then drops of like the miracle trump sure i don't know what that is and then the four star for the dudes is gain 10 crit stars crit damage 15 percent and then we got the summer emetai evasion one time np damage five percent and it drops lucky dice and then counting sheep for the males damage taken minus 100 np damage five percent so this is kind of crazy now that I look at it. Like, what does that mean? Is it only once? Huh. Oh, just, oh, not by 100%, by 100. Minus, okay. Yeah, so none of them too amazing. This is some great art, though. Fantastic art, as always. Fan looking great, Napoleon. Looking great. A lot of good stuff in the art, for sure. I don't even like you, and I like this CE a whole bunch. So now let's actually get to the summoning units. So there's a part one and part two. Part two has the units with the new uh, outfits in them. Uh, so let's start with uh, Musashi here. So she is a berserker. She has one quick card that hits four times, two arts cards that hit three times, and uh, two busters that hit four times, and an extra attack that hits five times. Um, her first skill is Excel Turn B, Grant Self Evasion for one attack, increases on crit damage by one turn, at level 10 that is 50%, and at level 1 it is 30%. Um, next. Fifth Serving B, double the number of hits when normal attacking with Arts cards for one turn, increases own damage when normal attacking with Arts, card, arts cards with Arts cards for one turn, increase on MP generation for three turns, NP percent, zero percent damage up and 30% at level 10, 30% MP rate at level 1, and then 50% at level 10. Um, and so this three, these three hits art cards turn to six hit arts cards. And now we've got 10 Magogan, EX, ignore invincibility for three turns, increase on attack for three turns, grant self gut says for one turn, for one time three turns, deals 500, uh, deal 500%, 500%, 500, 5,000, what was going on with me there? 500? No, what? 5,000 damage without killing self. Reduce all de enemies' defense for 3 turns. Attack up 20% and a defense down 20% and at level 10 it is 30% for both. Passive skills is Madness Enhancement EX. Crease Arts uh, Buster Performance by 12%. Increase Own Buster Performance by 12%. Magic Resistance C. Increase Own Debuff Resistance by 15%. Writing D, increase, increase own quick performance by 4%, and Divinity D, increase own damage by 125. And our Noble Phantasm is, um, I was told there would be a Magic Sword busting. Uh, deals damage to all enemies, reduces their crit attack chance by 30% for 3 turns, it's 450% at level 1. Chance to seal all Saber enemies, MP for 1 turn, it is 100% and 100% charge, uh, the MP seal. So, Musashi, I like her a whole bunch. Um, if you don't know, the one problem that a lot of Berserkers have is that their MP gain is usually very bad. Um, just in general. So this is why she ends up being pretty good later on when Castoria stuff starts to happen. And you can probably do this now with Tamamo if you can find enough friends running Tamamo or a decent MP gain team with like a Celsa Plus. And a bunch of other dudes. Um, Parcel... Parcel Tong? What the hell is his name? Parcel Linnaeus? He is a caster three-star that starts with a P. I forget how to pronounce it exactly. Um, but yeah, the biggest problem with a lot of uh, Berserkers is that their MP gain is usually pretty bad. That's why Lancelot is good, is because he increases his MP gain by 100% for one turn. So that makes it so his quick card is able for him to get just a buttload of MP. Um, when usually when you do it, it's not the most, uh, NP gain in the world. And with this, she's able to get 50%. So, right here. You see here, 50% at level 10, which is very good, very good, and very much needed for an arts unit. Um, but besides that, I really like her look. I really like all her, uh, outfits here. I'm sure you can see here, stage one, stage two, my, I think my favorite is the American bikini in stage two. Um... But she's also able to kind of survive as a Berserker, so she has a lot of that going on. So you can use her in a buttload of different ways. I don't think you could probably use her for, like, challenge quests. But it's okay, because almost 99% of all Berserkers are not meant for challenge quests. <laughs> but I think she's very good, and I'm definitely going to be going for her like crazy. I like her a whole bunch. So next, we got Hime, who's an archer and a criminal writer. 
Hime, who is an archer. I think I already said that. She has three arts cards, one quick, one buster. Uh, skill one is a Markmanship uh, FPSB. Increase on crit damage for three attacks, three turns. Grant self evasion for one attack, uh, for one attack, one turn. Really? That's uh, it's not great. And <laughs> the reason is is that usually because it's one attack, if you don't get attacked, then the it's kind of a waste. The the reason that the Musashi one is good is that if they don't attack her, then it kind of stays. But it's only for one attack. For having it one attack, one turn, that's actually kind of very bad. But maybe it, she's not super needed for it, so whatever. That level 1 is 30% uh, crit damage up, and at level 10 it is 50%, and it's a 5 turn cooldown, which is not bad. Princess Vacation False A. 500% chance to inflict taunt status to one enemy for 3 turns as debuff, demerit. Increases party attack for 3 turns, grant self, ignore evasion for 3 turns. Um, taunt is 100% and 300% at uh, level 10. At level 1, it's 10% attack up and 20% at level 10. And then Great Commander of Chiyogami. Increase on art performance for 3 turns, increase on buster performance for 3 turns. It's 20% at level 1 for both and 30% at level 10. She has Magic, magic Resistance B, increase on debuff resistance by 17.5%. Independent Action A, increase on crit damage by 10%. Divinity C minus increase own <laughs> damage by 145. Uh, fortification construction B increase own arts performance by 8%, reduces own damage taken by 200%. And her noble phantasm is Buster. And it is Hakoro Castle, Thousand Forms, Me, Me, Night Fever. Deals damage to all enemies. 300% uh, uh, level 1. And if you somehow get MP5, it is 500%. And her overcharge is increases party buster performance for 3 turns, increases party crit damage for 3 turns, 20%, 30%. Um, so even though I was critical of that first skill, I think she's actually pretty solid. Um, and I believe this is an AoE. Yeah, I think I said it was an AoE. So um, She looks great in this outfit, which I feel like a lot of summer units end up being how great do they look in the outfit. And Hime's, all of hers, are, is just great. So she's got that going on for her. She's got neutral summer, everyone's favorite alignment. Uh, it is a little bit weird that she has three arts and with a buster uh, NP, but it's fine because, yeah, I guess it's fine. She's more of like a support role, it kind of looks like. Uh, yeah, she's definitely more of a support role. So you actually want her to get um, her art stuff as quickly as possible. Then you can kind of use a noble Phan phantasm to increase everyone's buster performance and give them crit damage and kind of give stuff like that. I think the only thing she's really missing from here is the ability to get some crit stars. Uh, so you'd probably have to definitely bring that your own. Um, but yeah, that's her unit. I think she's pretty solid. There's probably better AoE archers, but there's definitely better AoE archers, but I think she's got a pretty fun thing going on here. Again, the only thing that's really missing for the entire build is maybe a little bit of crit stars. I don't even need much. Maybe like even five would be fine. Five every turn, so you can at least guarantee some uh, some crit stars or something, but I digress. And then finally we got Carmilla Ryder. Two quick cards, two arts cards, one buster. Her active skills are Femme Fatale False A. Chance to seal one enemy uh, skills for one turn, reduces their defense against crit damage for three turns, gain crit stars. So the seal chance is 50% at level 1 and 100% at level 10. Crit defense is 30% and 50% at level 10, minus of course. And 5 stars at level 1 and 15 stars at level 10. So, Phantom Thief's Calling Card A, 500% chance to inflict Calling Card. Um... Calling card sent, delay debuff for one turn for one enemy. Calling card sent reduces one enemy's NP gauge by one after one turn. Charges a party's NP gauge after one turn. Reduces one, um, one enemy's critical attack chance for three turns. The NP is 15% at level 1 and 25% at level 10. Crit chance is 20% down at level 1 and is 30% at level 10. Mistress CEX absorbs all enemies' HP without killing. <laughs> Wait, absorbs all enemies HP without- okay, I get it. The amount of HP reduced on the enemies equal to the amount of HP healed by the skill user. Reduces their defense for 3 turns. Um, HP absorbed is 1000 at level 1 and 2000 at level 10. And defense down is 20% and 30% at level 10. And she has independent action A and presence concealment B. 
Uh, her noble phantasm is the Iron Maiden that races in the dead of night. She is a quick card, and I believe this is to all enemies. Inflict buff block status on them for one turn and deals damage to them. Uh, MP damage at level 1 is 600%, which is really damn nice, actually. And reduces their quick resistance for three turns, which is also nice. And that is 20% uh, at charge level 1. And if you get to 500%, it's 40%. And also her max damage at MP level 5 is 1000 for an AoE. Uh, Alright, so... Let's get into what I actually think about her now. She's good for a four-star rider. I think she's pretty solid. There, I think there's actually not that many four-star riders that are amazing. Let me actually see if that's true. And again, I'm saying in specifics of NA, so when I get to some JP servants, I'm not really gonna think about it. Uh, let's see. Okay, kind of okay. Bad, I would say, for that one. Okay. Good. Very good. Very good. Good. And that's really it, man. That is not a lot. <laughs> but even less, I think there's some for Quick Arts. Three, uh, for Quick Arts, I think there's Red Hair, who's a three-star. But either way, let me go back. So... <clears throat> There's, I think, a lot of actual writers who are quick and um, uh, AoE. I think the best one out of all of them is the Carrot Man, who I cannot remember the name of at the moment. Even though I was just literally looking at him, so let me go back there and see what his name is before it completely bugs me. That I can't remember. Achilles! There we go. AKA the Carrot Man. Um, the only thing that's kind of a bummer here with her specific call card is that she feels like she's maybe built more for, um, you know, challenging kind of quests. So I don't know if I would specifically use her for, um, farming stuff. I think you totally could, though, because she does deal a lot of damage, and quick resistance is pretty nice, so I'm gonna have to test it out a little bit. But similar to all the other summer units, I think she's got it where it counts in that she her ascensions are great. She looks great and her moral phantasm is great. So if you're definitely a fan of Carmilla, you should be pretty happy about it. And even if you're not, I think she's still a pretty neat unit to have around. Uh, well, let's go on. And this calling card thing actually sounds kind of nice if you could use it correctly. And it's on the six turn cooldown. It's not too bad. So... Those are the three summer units that are coming from Banner. Let me mention the big important one that's coming from here. Kotaro, you probably already have NP5. It's not that hard to get him. Siegfried, you probably have him NP5 because you had you were very unlucky in all your summons. But he's perfectly fine if you're fighting dragons. If you're fighting dragons, he is amazing. Or you can turn them into dragons and the problem is mute. And now we have Merlin. I've been trying to make a video about whether or not Merlin needs a buff because it feels like a lot of JP players are saying that he needs a buff because they think that he's going to be replaced pretty soon. Um, I don't know how that's basically speculation at this point. I'm going to say right now if you pull from Merlin, if you want to run Buster, your choice right now is Merlin and it's going to be Merlin for two years. So either get Merlin now or don't get Merlin at all and don't really bother with Buster. There's not like a lot of good alternatives to Merlin if you're someone who wants to run a buster heavy team. Like there's ways around it, but it costs so much more and none of the units are as good as Merlin is. Like he's just built so amazing that it's hard for me to even imagine someone saying like, oh, maybe he needs a buff. But maybe that's just kind of says the state of Bago after Castoria has left such a wake that Merlin is no longer super top tier amazing and now he's simply great which is kind of crazy but i digress either way i think he's worth summoning if you're someone who really cares for him i personally don't like using buster so i have never summoned for merlin uh and i will continue that because i think he'll just randomly show up for me one day when i'm doing gssr because that's what i genuinely think will happen with merlin and if i got an mp2 merlin i would actually be kind of pissed so that's basically it for the part one that's coming up for Summer 4. I, even though I try and make these videos not so long, it always ends up being around 20 minutes. Thank you very much if you saw all the way through. Um, thank you very much for supporting me because that 
believe it or not, watching all the way through also helps. And just like I said at the beginning of the video, you can leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go off and continue grinding up Summer 3 because my head is hurting and that can only mean that I'm very close to the end of the event and not anywhere near to actually being done with it. So goodbye everyone, you guys have a good day, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.